Hey guys! Today we'll be going over the best ways to complete master clues. This guide will cover requirements, gear, and tips and tricks. The requirements? These clues require various skills, as shown on screen. Master clues also require several items to be unlocked, including the lumberjack outfit, prospector's kit, angler's outfit, full graceful, a fire cape, a fighter torso, infernal axe, and barrow's gloves. You also require 100% Arceus favor, 75% Hosidius favor, 100% Piscarilius favor, and 100% Shazian favor. They also require a huge variety of quests up to and including Song of the Elves. So why would you want to complete these incredibly difficult 6-8 to eight step clue scrolls? The first reason most people complete these is for the chance at the Bloodhound pet. This incredibly rare 1 out of 5,000 drop can only be obtained from Master Clues, making it one of, if not the rarest pet in the game. You also have a reasonable 1 out of 15 chance at fighting the Mimic after completing one, which is required for the Music Cape. These clues are also incredibly profitable. You get around 200k to 500k per clue scroll in regular drops alone, and all 6 of the 3rd Age items in this set are worth over 300 mil, with the 3rd Age pickaxe sitting at a comfortable 1.1 bill. Let's get into setup for those of you who want to grind these relatively efficiently. My master clue gear tab has basic void ranged gear, desert amulet 4 for regen and banking, quest point cape for fairy rings, Kandaren headgear 4 for teleports to Sherlock, music cape, which I unfortunately can't use until I find a mimic but I would bring with me, which lets you teleport to fallow. I also bring a full set of basic runes for teleports, 5 sharks, and a ranging potion. A crafting cape would be very smart to bring as well if you have one. I used Runelight to create a tab for items Watson may desire. You can see the items on the screen. I don't personally keep an Armadale helmet in my bank as I would never use it for anything but clues, so I just buy that when Watson asks for one. You can import my tabs to your own bank by copying the codes in the pinned comments and right clicking the import tag button in your bank, hitting import and then pasting. I'm not going to go over how to solve the clues, as Runelight can do that for you for the most part. I will, however, talk about the various wizards you will encounter. These are the reasons I bring combat gear. The first and much easier wizard you can encounter is the Brassican Mage. These don't use melee and attack using magic and ranged attacks. These are fairly simple to kill but tend to hit pretty accurately, so you want to bring some food at least. I like to pray ranged, as ranged gear does give decent magic defense. The far harder wizards are ancient wizards. These appear for any coordinate or hot slash cold clue that is in multi. I will leave a link to the maps of multi zones in the pinned comments so you can tell when you will get one. Ancient wizards spawn in a set of three, a melee wizard that poisons with a dagger. This requires you have some kind of anti-poison. A ranged wizard that uses a crossbow and a magic wizard. If using a ranged setup, pray melee and immediately take out the melee wizard. He can hit up to 36 and is the most dangerous. Next, pray ranged and kill the ranger, and then finally pray mage and kill the mage. Don't underestimate these mages. They have low HP, but they can all hit fairly high and can quickly body you if you aren't prepared. If I get this step in the wilderness, I bring only my blowpipe, a clue box, spade, ranging potion, a few prayer potions, antidote plus plus, and the rest of my inventory is filled with sharks. With a range level above 90, these should present no problem at all. Finally, let's move on to some quick tips and tricks that will speed your clues up. There's a clue that requires you to feed a fire shade in Shades of Morton. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, but that's what I call them. The first time you do this step, you will need quite a few pyre logs and have to fight your way through the caves, obtaining more and more keys until you can get to a fire shade. This takes a really long time, so make sure after you've completed this step for the first time that you keep the silver key. This can actually be banked and allows you to skip through every door should you get the step again and kill the shades really quickly. There's also a clue step that I consider the longest to complete in the game. It's, if you're feeling brave, dig beneath the dragon's eye. This requires you to bring an unpowered orb and runes to charge an orb throughout the Legends Quest Cave, casting charge orb to get through a door, going down the agility section of the hill, and digging below a section of wall. God forbid you forget an item as you will have to go through this 5 minute section again. This can be included as a torn clue. If you ever see this clue, make sure you save it for last as there is a decent chance you may get it twice in a row, and you can just dig in the same spot to save time in the next step. You often have to buy items for master clues, armadillo helmet, dragon chain body, etc. If you plan on selling it right after, take the chance to get a profitable flip off of the purchase. 
There's no point in rushing the clue scroll if you're just going to lose as much on selling the item as you gain from the clue. If you are a Helmy, good luck in your efforts to obtain these items, as they are definitely not easy to get. And with that, I'm ending the video there. Hopefully you guys have luck in getting your Bloodhounds and Third Age items from these clue scrolls. If you liked the video, give it a like or subscribe. Thanks so much, guys.